Today we're going to be making volumetric clouds using either generated 3D noise or a 2D texture. And then we're going to add lighting so we can sit back and enjoy a beautiful digital sunset. There's a lot to cover to create this shader, so let's get started. The first step is to take either a noise texture or 3D generated noise mapped via world position and slap it on a quad. Then animate the noise by panning it. You can either pan the UVs in the case of a texture or pan the world position in the case of generated noise. For a texture in particular, a good idea to add variation is to get a second copy of this noise, change the UV scale and then pan it in the opposite direction and then blend it with the first. Depending on how bright your noise is, a multiplier is usually appropriate. Now you can take this blend and use a step cutoff to define where the clouds begin and end if you'd like hard edged clouds and then pipe this into opacity. Or for an adjustable soft cloud, remap this value with a minimum cloud cutoff float, clamp it between 0 and 1 and then raise it to a cloud softness power. Now you can adjust the softness and coverage of the clouds to your heart's content. Now you have 2D animated noise. It's a good start, but it's not exactly a cloud yet. To make them 3D and volumetric, we just take that quad and stack it up a bunch of times vertically. It's really just a quick trick quad stack. You can either model this in advance or ideally use a script to generate the quad stack by calling graphics draw mesh or graphics draw mesh instanced. Generating by script is probably better because you can control how many layers are used and adjust them based on performance. I like to add more layers the closer you get to the clouds. If you're using a texture, this will make these weird columns of volumetric noise. So what we want to do now is use the distance from the middle of the stack to darken the opacity map of the quads further away, causing the step cutoff to taper the volume more towards the top and bottom. If you're modeling a stack of quads in advance, you can bake this information in the vertex colors or use the vertex positions. If you're using draw mesh, you'll want to feed the middle position and cloud height into the shader via script with material.setfloat. Also add in some scale control by multiplying the UVs and perhaps mask the whole effect with a circular gradient to avoid hitting the edges of the quads. Hey, now we have 3D noise, but how do we light it? We're going to add three separate lighting contributions to the clouds, an ambient pass, a subsurface scattering pass, and most importantly, a sunlight directional pass. Ambient is easy enough. Just use the same vertical gradient that you used for the taper as a mask and add in the sky and ground ambient colors. Perhaps boost the sky color contribution as it would add more light. Just doing this already makes the clouds look full of volume. I use a script to change the colors over time, which goes a long way to making the clouds look properly lit at different times of day. The subsurface scattering pass is also pretty easy. Just use the same dot product of the view direction and the negated light direction that we used in our subsurface scattering video. Multiply that by the light color and add it in. Now time for the directional light, which is not quite as easy. Since these volume clouds made with noise don't have any normals, we can't calculate lighting properly, but we can use a trick to fake the lighting. What you want to do is offset the noise by the light direction, just a bit. Take this offset noise, subtract it from the original noise, and now you have a mask that defines the lit and unlit areas of the volume. With 3D generated noise, that's easy. Just generate it twice, the second time with the light direction vector added to the world position. But what about if you're using a texture? To get that offset, you simply need to transform the light direction into tangent space, which is the two-dimensional surface of the mesh. That's where the UVs live. Make a copy of the noise texture and offset its UVs by the tangent space light direction. And voila, you have your shadow mask. Unfortunately, this effect only works well when the light is coming from the side, since these are just 2D textures. But we already have a vertical gradient, which we use for cloud tapering and ambient light. So we can simply blend to this as the light passes above the clouds, using a dot product of the light direction and an up vector to control the blend. You can also use this dot product to change how the clouds behave at different times of day such as boosting their colors or subsurface scattering during sunrise and sunset or darkening the clouds during nighttime. When we add those three lighting contributions together, we get convincingly lit 3D volumetric clouds that hold up in a variety of different lighting conditions. This is definitely an effect that's best when viewed from a distance, but with a bit of work, it's possible to allow closer inspection. A cool reason to use a 2D texture is that you can swap the noise out easily and get lots of different cloud effects. For performance, and also perhaps artistic reasons, you can also lower the resolution on the texture, which can give less realistic but more stylized and performant clouds. Also, there are a ton of ways to optimize it, so if you're aware of the camera position and lighting limitations, you can avoid a bunch of unnecessary shader computation. One other cool thing about this approach is because the noise is world space, you can lock the horizontal axis of the clouds to the camera and then fly forever through an infinite sky of clouds. And that's it. That's my super easy two minute cloud shader. 
I hope you enjoyed today's recipe, and please join me again for more exciting adventures in the land of real-time game effects. If you like what we covered today, please like and subscribe, it makes a big difference and fills me with warm fuzzies. If you didn't like it, please leave a dislike and a comment so I can improve future videos. If you really liked it, or you want to get access to the source files used in this video, which you can use in your own projects, please consider joining my Patreon. That's the little red potion bottle link right there. Your support helps me continue to make these videos. I also have a more thorough write-up of everything we covered, and most importantly, the sacred files. Thanks for watching. I love games! See you next time.